It is hard to overstate the importance of electricity in 2021. Electrical engineers are the minds behind the creation and manufacture of electrical equipment. Whether it is your phone, your refrigerator, or your computer, an electrical engineer had a part in the creation of it. In this video, we're going to go over the educational requirements, the salaries, and the job market of electrical engineers. So how do you become an electrical engineer in 2021? You need a bachelor's degree from typically an accredited university. In fact, according to the Occupational Information Network, 70% of electri practicing electrical engineers had a bachelor's degree in 2020, whereas around 23% had a master's degree. So most jobs just require a bachelor's degree, but there are some practicing electrical engineers that have a master's degree. If you're interested in eventually becoming an engineering manager, they tend to have a little bit more education. 39% of practicing engineering managers have a master's degree and getting a degree in engineering opens up so many different pathways. That's why it's such a good idea to consider engineering because it kind of gives you this transferable skill set. Electrical engineers can become engineering managers. They can become post-secondary engineering teachers. They can become software developers. They can work on many in many different engineering fields, but they can also become another type of engineer if they so desired. And the list goes kind of on and on. Many engineers also become entrepreneurs. So what kind of compensation should an electrical engineer expect in 2021? Well, this definitely depends on which country you live in. In Germany, according to payscale.com, the average compensation of an electrical engineer is $59,792 when converted to United States currency, USD. In the United Kingdom, it was $65,224. Canada, $74,749. Australia, $86,433. And finally, the United States, where the median base salary of an electrical engineer working 40 hours a week was $100,830. Just like in many other occupations, the United States tends to pay more than other countries. Although I have noticed that Australia is really catching up. And this all fluctuates based off the currency prices and how strong the dollar is, how strong the Australian dollar is. So this is all constantly changing. In the United States, electrical engineering is the seventh most lucrative form of engineering according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2020. Electronics engineers, chemical, aerospace, nuclear, computer, hardware, not software, and petroleum engineers tend to make a little bit more, and this is average salary rather than median salary. Fortunately for electrical engineers, they have been seeing pretty solid wage growth over the past two decades. In the year 2000, they were earning around $66,000 as an average base salary. This grew to around 106,000 in 2020. They are kind of beat out by engineering teachers and engineering managers, but they are doing really well. Overall, they're seeing about an $1,800 or $1,900 wage growth every single year. This means that by 2030, electrical engineers could earn around $126,000 per year. Of course, there are U.S. states where electrical engineers tend to make a little bit more. The state of California, on average, pays electrical engineers around $124,000. Basically, the dark blue states in this map tend to pay electrical engineers a little bit more. The Golden State tends to pay the most, but there's also New Jersey, Vermont, and state of Maryland. So that covers the compensation of electrical engineers. Next up, what is the job market like? Is there heavy demand for electrical engineers in 2021? Well, the first thing to understand is that the electrical engineering workforce is pretty large. There's a lot of employed electrical engineers. They're not part of the big three, civil, industrial, and mechanical engineering. Those workforces are much larger than the, the electrical engineering workforce, but basically it is the fourth, has the fourth highest workforce. In the year 2020, there was 185,220 employed electrical engineers all around the United States. And they have seen okay job growth over the past 20 years. In the year 2000, there was around 162,000 employed. This grew to around 195,000 employed in 2020. So they've seen about 30,000 more employed in about two decades. There are other engineering fields that are growing faster. Industrial engineers are seeing about a 10% growth over the next 10 years, whereas electrical engineers, are they're forecasted to see about a 3% growth over the next 10 years. 
The level of job growth for electrical engineers into the future really depends on if the United States is going to be building and creating new things over the next 10 years. Electrical engineers and electronics engineers got kind of hurt in the early 2000s when there was a lot of outsourcing of engineer jobs and factories to China and Asia. If this outsourcing is allowed over the next 10 years, there will be less employed electrical and electronics engineers. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. With companies like Tesla and other EV startups, this really could lead to a lot of job growth for these engineers. Another great way to gauge how competitive the job market is at this particular moment in time is to look at the number of job postings for electrical engineers. To do this, I usually use Indeed.com. I just did a general search for electrical engineering job postings nationally all across the United States. When I did this search, it showed 31,798 job postings for electrical engineers across the entire United States. When we compare this to the work, the size of the workforce, which is around 185,000, this actually shows a pretty severe shortage of electrical engineers in 2021. In my past couple of videos, I looked at this similar ratio for civil engineers, mechanical engineers, and industrial engineers, but I haven't seen a ratio this severe for engineers. Based off this metric alone, it really does seem like electrical engineers are really, really high in demand, even over some more popular engineering fields. So that covers the job market for electrical engineers. It is obviously a very in-demand occupation right now, especially in the United States. What are electrical engineers like? Would this occupation be compatible with your interests and personality? According to the Myers-Briggs company, the Myers-Briggs personality type most attracted to becoming an electrical engineer is the ENTJ, also known as the commander. And this is actually the same uh, personality type most attracted to become civil and industrial engineers as well. Meanwhile, the second most likely type to become an electrical engineer is the architect, also known as the INTJ, no surprise there. Then it's the debater, the ENTP, and then finally the thinker, the INTP. Definitely notice that all four are thinking over feeling. If you're familiar with Holland Codes, which is a different personality framework, electrical engineers are high and realistic and investigative, just like pretty much every other engineering field. The cool thing about becoming an electrical engineer is you're building a transferable skill set. If you decide you want a more social occupation in the future, you have the potential to become an engineering teacher teaching on a post-secondary level. And if you're really, really ambitious, you also have the option of becoming an engineering manager. So as you can see, there are pros and cons becoming an electrical engineer in 2021. Electrical engineers tend to earn more than many other engineering fields in the United States, at least. The United States is the highest paying place in the world according to my sample set for electrical engineers. If you enjoyed this video, definitely also check out my civil or mechanical engineering video. Both of these videos also go into the educational requirements, the wage growth over the years, and the personality types of civil and mechanical engineers. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.